What's going on guys? It's Greg here, aka New York Prepper. You're watching Nuclear War Survival Frequently Asked Question number four. And in this video, we're going to talk about whether or not if you were to drop a nuclear weapon onto other nuclear weapons, would it set those nuclear weapons off? So for example, let's say if Russia were to drop nukes onto one of our U.S. nuclear stockpile facilities where we keep nuclear warheads. An example of that would be the Pantex plant in Texas, Hill Air Force Base in Utah, and also the Trident missile storage in Bangor, Washington, where they store hundreds if not thousands of Trident missiles and the warheads as well. So if Russia were to nuke those strategic nuclear stockpiles, would that set off those warheads that are in the stockpile? So that's what I want to talk about. So the simple answer is no, okay? It will not set off those other weapons, okay? It will not set off the warheads that are in silos, in stockpile, in subs. It's not going to set them off, okay? Let's say, for example... In Whiteman Air Force Base, where we have our B-2 bombers, if let's say we have a couple hundred gravity bombs that are stored there and they have nuclear warheads on them and Russia hits Whiteman with a nuke, they will not set off those gravity bombs, those warheads. Same thing if they nuke Bangor, Washington, if they nuke Pantex Plant, Hill Air Force Base, Anywhere else there's nuclear warheads being stored, it will not set them off. Okay, so rest assured, you don't have to worry about that. So I want to just quickly explain to you why, so you can understand the reasons for that. So a nuclear warhead in modern times uses what's known as nuclear fusion, okay? And nuclear fusion is from the fusing of two radioactive materials together in layman's terms. I'm not really a chemist, but I'm trying to explain it to you in layman's terms. With nuclear fusion, that's what pretty much 99.9% .9 of the nuclear warheads in the U.S. and the Russian arsenal are nuclear fusion warheads, which are also known as thermonuclear warheads okay or hydrogen bombs is what they were first called in the 50s all right so nuclear fusion is much more powerful than nuclear fission okay nuclear fission is when you split the atoms okay and when you split the atoms you get energy release okay so fusion you're fusing two atoms together Okay, radioactive materials, you're fusing the atoms of the radioactive elements together, and by fusing them together, it releases a chain reaction that's extremely powerful. Okay, a nuclear chain reaction. Nuclear fission, this, these were the first nuclear weapons that were developed and the first source of nuclear energy, and this was the Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombs, okay? Hiroshima, Nagasaki, splitting, okay? Okay, so most modern weapons are nuclear fusion, they're thermonuclear, the H-bomb developed by the U.S. in the early 50s was a fusion warhead. Also, this is what most nuclear power plants use now because it's a little bit cleaner and also it is more energetic. So fusion is much more powerful than fission, whether we're talking about weapons, whether we're talking about power plants, 
energy, okay? Fusion is always going to be more powerful than fission, okay? So fission was the first nuclear energy that we developed as human beings, okay? And so in a modern nuclear warhead, like I said, we use fusion, all right? So in order to fuse two radioactive elements together and get them to become unstable, all right, you need a lot of pressure and a lot of compression to squeeze those atoms together to the point where you're literally fusing them together at a molecular level. And when you force them together, it releases that chain reaction and that explosion, the energy. Okay, so in order to do that, you need something to compress those two radioactive elements together, okay? And that's what nuclear fission is used for today in nuclear warheads. So we realize that even though nuclear fission is obsolete, we could still use it to generate pressure and compression to set off a nuclear fusion bomb. Okay, so in a modern nuclear warhead, you have fissile material, and you can think of this as like a primer. Okay, this is your initial explosion inside of the warhead that generates pressure and it squeezes the other elements in the warhead together, squeezes them together, fuses the atoms, and causes that massive explosion in the thermonuclear explosion okay so that is why you can't set off a nuclear weapon with another nuclear weapon by just dropping one nuclear weapon on it because in order to compress the material okay the radioactive elements to squeeze them together it has to be in a vacuum okay the two elements have to be in a vacuum it has to be completely sealed and you need some kind of reflective material to contain the pressure and focus that pressure onto those two radioactive elements and squeeze them together, okay? It's kind of like a diesel engine, all right? Diesel engines work on compression. They have no spark plugs, all right? And they, they use compression in order to ignite the diesel fuel, all right? So it's the same thing as a diesel engine. It's pretty much the same concept. You have that cylinder inside of the diesel engine and it creates compression because it's, it's a vacuum, it's airtight, and it focuses all that pressure. When the piston goes up and down inside of the cylinder, it generates pressure inside of the cylinder because you have that massive metal piston pushing down rotating when the, when you turn the key on the battery starts to crank the crankshaft and you have the pistons compressing the air inside of the cylinder and that's pretty much the same thing with a nuclear warhead you need an airtight vacuum in order to compress the radioactive elements okay so that is why if you drop a nuclear weapon on another nuclear weapon, it's not going to set it off. Even if, let's say, you had one, let's say you laid out a giant nuclear weapon in the middle of a field, okay, which I mark here with my X, okay. This is a, a giant, you know, warhead, okay, it's a giant warhead here, all right. And let's say Russia sees that we left this huge warhead this massive ICBM in the middle of an open field or, you know, in Area 51, let's say their satellites pick it up, that we have this thing laying out in the open. And let's say they're able to precisely, which is questionable because every ICBM has a margin of error. They can't directly hit a very small target. They usually have a margin of error of up to 20 meters or even more, depending on the ICBM. But let's say, for instance, they, they get lucky and they, they do a direct hit with their nuke, okay? So they drop, they drop their nuke, okay, right on top of our nuke, 
okay, so they fly over or they drop an ICBM, the warhead comes down and it hits our warhead directly. It's not going to set it off because even though you're going to have all that pressure right on top of that warhead, there's no way to contain the pressure, okay? So even if you directly hit those warheads with another warhead, it's not going to set it off because you don't have anything to compress it, okay? Because you're going to have the explosion and the pressure is going to go out in all directions, right? It's not going to be contained. It's going to blow up on top of the warhead, but it's not going to contain it, okay? So if let's say we look at a warhead, this will be a warhead, all right? This will be, let's say, one of the American warheads. Inside of the warhead, you have special material inside that's a vacuum it's completely sealed okay this this material here um it's usually some kind of very strong material okay because it has to focus that that initial fission explosion so you have two bombs here so let's say this is bomb number one okay and then here you have your actual bomb okay this could be you know uh let's say you have uh, these two X's represent the plutonium. Let's say this is like plutonium 1 and plutonium 2. Okay, you have two pieces of plutonium here. Here you have your nuclear fission warhead inside of the fusion warhead. So you literally have a small nuclear weapon inside of a larger nuclear weapon. That's what's happening here. And then they have this really strong material. They detonate this smaller nuclear fission charge or bomb whatever you want to call it it's basically like a primer and then when it explodes it, it creates the compression and it forces these two pieces of plutonium together and then you get a massive explosion you know all all kinds of devastating effects all right so even if you drop one warhead on another there's no way of compressing the the pressure there's no there's no way to hold that pressure in the pressure is going to go out everywhere okay so it will not set off another warhead so you do not need to worry about that so i wanted to just explain that because a lot of people have been asking me that okay i hope that um this helps you out and a modern nuclear warhead if you think about it it's almost like a smokeless powder cartridge like a modern rifle or pistol or shotgun cartridge. Okay, you have a primer, and then you have your gunpowder, and then you have your projectile. You have the primer, which is struck by the firing pin, and the primer in itself is basically a small explosion that ignites the gunpowder. And then because the gunpowder is compressed inside of a shell, it creates pressure and gases and that pressure pushes the bullet out of the barrel, out of the case. And it's very similar to the way a modern nuclear fusion thermonuclear weapon works, is you have that fission bomb inside that acts as the primer to focus the pressure on these two materials here, plutonium, and it squeezes them together and then they explode in a fusion reaction. But it's not the same as a smokeless powder cartridge because it's not flammable. It's, it's not like a primer where if you put it on something hot, it's gonna go off or it's not unstable to the point where if you strike it with something, it's just gonna go off. It's, it's completely different, okay? Nuclear weapons are not like traditional bombs they're not flammable okay the only way that nuclear weapons work is through compression through pressure there's nothing flammable in them now sometimes instead of using a small fission bomb to set off the main reaction they could also use tnt that's a possibility but they moved away from that a long time ago okay so but even if, let's say, you did have TNT, because I'm sure somebody's going to say, well, if there's TNT in there, what if they drop a warhead on it and that's going to set off the TNT? 
Well, that, that wouldn't work that way because if you drop a warhead on it, you're going to blow apart this material here that's compressing all of this plutonium. So you hit this directly with a warhead, you're going to destroy this whole thing here. Everything's going to get destroyed and you're not going to be able to compress the plutonium together. Okay, so I hope this video helped you out and check out my nuclear war frequently asked questions playlist i'll leave a link up above if you have any other questions about nuclear war send me an email nyprepper85 at gmail.com or you can leave a comment below this video and if i get enough questions i'll make a video about it okay so that's pretty much it for this one take care god bless and don't forget the three p's Prepare, practice, and persevere.